Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn and this is the Corsair K70 TKL. Now this is not my usual unboxing video but a behind the scenes look at how I'm going to unbox this thing and what is going to be the means of capturing the footage to then show you what the various angles look like the usual things with key sounds and all that other goodness. Now I'm a bit behind with the K70 TKL and so I thought it'd be nice to have some extra content to go with it. It came out a couple of weeks ago and I missed the embargo due to having a massive pile of other things to do which included other keyboards and content from Corsair including that Corsair Sabre mouse that you might have seen and the K55 RGB and so I'm a bit behind on that unfortunately I didn't hit the embargo so there are other videos out there already but Hopefully, if you like my keyboard videos, then you'll enjoy this next one as well. And I'm interested to see what Corsair's TKL keyboard's going to be like, so that'll be fun. And this is a behind-the-scenes look at it, which is going to be a bit more rough and ready than my usual videos. But if you're interested, stick with me and I'm going to show you how I capture all these things and talk about why I do the things the way I do and why I want to try and make it look interesting. Now one of the things that you might have noticed about my videos anyway, if you subscribe, is that I don't usually do this sort of video, the talking head style, and that's because I've tried to make my channel a bit more unique, because everyone's doing talking head sort of personality, sitting in front of the camera talking about products and what they feel about it, and I can't do that at the moment, because I literally don't know what this is like other than that it's got a nice box. Um, I haven't watched any other videos on it, I haven't read anything about it, apart from the reviewer's guide and so beyond that I'm not able to give my opinions yet and what I really want to be able to do with these videos is to focus on the product itself so as I discussed in the previous behind the scenes video if you've seen that is I've got a number of different lenses that includes the likes of this Sigma 1.4 aperture lens the Lumix macro lens, another Olympus macro lens that I've got on that the wide angle lens that I'm using at the moment I've got another Sigma lens and another Lumix lens, I've got a multitude of lenses, so I use multiple lenses and multiple cameras. So here's my other GH4 for example on this weirdly cheap and wonderful boom arm which is attached to my desk that lets me get top down shots. And then I've got another camera, a GH5 which is on a tripod which is also capturing footage on a slider and a Edelkrone head which allows it to do some pretty interesting angles and pans and tilts which I'll show later on if you've not seen that in the previous video you might find that interesting but basically the main goal of the content that I create is to create tech porn which is what <laughs> that's my goal is to create close-up shots of technology and gaming gear that's sublime in the quality of the capture so which is why I use macro lenses so I can get really close-up shots of things as they've come out of the box when they're not covered in dust and dirt and also just show the nice angles of it and the features so things like the grips and the textures so for example the HyperX Origin 60 that I looked at recently in the Corsair K65 Mini with the textured space bars I was able to use the macro lenses to get a close-up look at those and show what that was like and just sort of focus on the quality of that and that's been the main way I've been doing content for a long while. I don't do talking head styles very often apart from maybe with the exception of headset reviews so you can show you what it looks like on the head and the microphone and also VR headsets just to show them being used in them but I don't want the videos to be about me, I want them to be about the products so you can enjoy my voice because I know a lot of people do that but also focus mostly on what the product is and enjoy a lot of shots of that because a lot of other people just sit there with the product in their hand from a distance and 90% of the screen is them and that's not a criticism because obviously a lot of people like that but I want to do things a bit differently so in my case it's going to be close-up shots but this is a behind the scenes look and I'm going to try and do these a bit more regularly and they might be a bit more long, a bit more lengthy, they might be a bit not quite as well edited and perhaps not as fancy uh, but maybe they're interesting if you're interested in following my content or you just want to see sort of how things are put together maybe get some ideas for doing your own videos or maybe just because you're curious about initial impressions or how I'm doing things so Stick with me as I unbox the case, uh, the Corsair K70 RGB TKL, or the Corsair as I just called it for some bloody reason. I don't know why. This video will also include some bloopers, probably.
So the first step for these videos is generally trying to find a position on the desk that I'm happy with, which also means, as you can see, moving stuff out of the way. And trying to get the right amount of lighting, because at the moment I don't have that. And the lights that I've got aren't particularly good, so just adjusting those lights and getting them into a good position. And maybe that's a bit better now. So what I'm doing this behind the scenes gives you a view. And then obviously, as I said, I've got this other camera. So what I'm gonna do now is try and adjust that into a position that's useful. Um, and I'm not sure, maybe I'll go top down. Maybe have a top down view or maybe you get it from an angle. And then this decision of where I put that also. This has been sitting on my desk for a couple of weeks, so it's a bit dusty. I don't want dust in the video, that would look awful. And then so I've got to get lighting and everything sorted out. Making it look nice. And this time I'm going to be using this tiny little knife. Well, I bought on Wish ages ago, I think it was on Wish, which is actually sort of a bit been marred by, I think it's blue tack that stuck to it, but you see this cost me a pound. It's not very sharp, but it's quite amusing. So now it's going to be a case of trying to position everything the way I want it. So I think I'm actually going to swap lenses because this lens probably isn't going to do what I want it to at this angle, I'd imagine because it's a bit close, you probably can't see. So I'm going to swap this lens that's on here with this one and maybe put them the other way around. So I'll be back in a second. So hilariously, this is the reason why I actually bought multiple lenses, so I didn't have to keep taking the lenses off and have specific lenses for specific cameras. And I actually had multiple cameras for multiple angles, but I end up changing the lenses regularly. And now, you can probably see I've got a much better shot. So that is roughly what it's going to look like. The problem I've got is there's a bit too much light. So I need to diffuse that a bit. Maybe beam it on the ceiling or something. Yeah, see, if I put this up to 400 ISO, yeah, that's nicer. And so the reason I do all this is set it up so that you can see multiple angles of the keyboard at once and then I can cut between them and actually it's beneficial to have two different cameras set up because it's really hard to keep an eye on the camera and on what you're unboxing at the same time which can sometimes result in some poor footage that I end up having to just get rid of and or start again and it's just a bit of a disaster so I've actually found I used to have three cameras at different angles but now I've got one that's sitting on the tripod and I would like to get another one at some point because I do like to have that multiple angle shot because it can be really nice, especially for things like doing the key actuation sounds, but just for unboxing it as well. And so at this instance, I'm just gonna have one angle from the right and then one straight down, but sometimes I like to just go from a, the left and then the right and then just mix it up, try and make it a bit varied so it's not the same shot all the time and also to have a slightly different background. So I might throw in one of many mouse mats that I have in random drawers to make things a bit different looking later on as well. So I actually end up changing my mind of how I was gonna do that uh, as I was unboxing it. Uh, I actually ended up changing the lens, so I actually went for a Sigma lens. So I went for the Sigma lens on, uh, on this camera. But the top down shot actually worked out quite well and should be quite nice. From here I can also take pictures for the thumbnails and for other uses and obviously we're now in a position where I'm actually going to change what I was doing. I didn't realise this keyboard came with these extra keys so the K70 comes with textured Wasdy keys uh, and replacement keys for around this area which are really nice and they were on the K100 before and so uh, I really like the look of them but what this gives me is an opportunity to replace the keys on here and also to get some really close macro shots of those keys because I think they look particularly nice compared to the standard keys on this layout. Also other things that happened while I was unboxing it as I noticed for example it has this little peel on it so now I've got to work out an angle I can get to get some nice peel because I know people like 
the peel on there. And then the other things I noticed is the USB-C port, removable USB-C cable, so a shot of that is gonna be important. And obviously I've got to account for key press sounds is another thing. Another question people regularly have when they see these keyboard videos is why are your shift keys in that different? You know, it's large end key, small shift key, UK layout, that's what that difference is, because you Americans like to have small end keys, which I absolutely hate by the way, because I always end up pressing the wrong button, but you Americans also hate this small shift key, which I'd never even thought about, but actually I can understand why you wouldn't like it. Um, and that is down to just the variance and the difference in those layouts, so that was fun. Uh, other things that happened was um, when I was unboxing it, this camera started to wobble, so now I've got to make a mental note that I need to accommodate for that when I'm in the editing process. Because this stand that I use just isn't up to it. It's a cheap boom arm, it doesn't do a very good job. If I knock the desk too much, the camera wobbles, and then that gets picked up in the footage, which just looks awful. I can use video stabilisation to fix it, but it's not great, and it's a pain. So now I've got to try and work out how I'm going to capture this. I'm also thinking that maybe, maybe because this probably has a standard bottom row, that I could take the HyperX pudding keycaps that I start to use. Actually, this is a mix of Corsairs. This is Corsairs PBT double shot white keycaps that were on the K95. And I tried to put them on the K100, but it didn't work out perfectly. But I think all keyboards now are standard bottom row, so I should be able to use the HyperX pudding keycaps that I bought, and I could maybe replace the K70 with them, and that might look nice. I think that might be worth doing. Uh, it's going to be a lot of extra work, and I don't know where I've got enough time to do that, because it's now nearly 10 o'clock. So, uh, yeah, I've got not much time, because I'm old and I need to go to bed at a reasonable hour. So... I'm going to contemplate how to do that. I think I'll start with everything else, but maybe I'll do the key gaps. And I like the idea of doing stop motion with that. And this camera's good for that. It's set up in that way, actually, because it has a remote control on top, which allows me to remotely activate the shutter so that I'm not touching the camera because obviously it wobbles on this boom arm. So you don't want to wobble when you're trying to take pictures. So I could do a stop motion removing that, but it would probably take an hour to do that because it takes ages to do stop motion or time-lapse videos. And I like doing them because it's a bit more of something interesting to put into the video, but it does take a lot of time. And I also still need to remove the keys, do the key test, show you close-ups of that, get some nice shots of it. So I'd love to probably do all that first and then suss out whether I've got time to do the other thing or not. But this hopefully shows you some of the thought process uh, behind my videos and how it works. So now I'm going to try and get some close-up shots of this, get some of the key sounds, maybe plug it into my PCs to get some of the initial RGB shots. I like to do it all as early as I can while it's out of the box before it starts picking up dust because they inevitably pick up dust really quickly and the camera picks up dust and dirt like crazy and it can be like even within half an hour to an hour of getting out of the box that it suddenly looks dirty on camera when it doesn't in reality because the lights and everything else can make quite a difference so I need to get as many good quality shots as I can immediately otherwise people will think I'm disgusting when in reality it's just the camera picking it up. Now here's the HyperX pudding keycaps that I was talking about. Unfortunately this is a US layout so it probably won't work because there'll be a large a uh, large shift key problem and small enter key, so I probably can't do it. So that's that, unfortunately. Corsair's meant to be releasing different colours of key sets in the near future. I think that's sometime this month, so I might chase them and ask if they'll send some uh, nice ones. Uh, but this would have been fun, but I think it would end up just being messy because I ended up with a couple of keys that weren't PBT, so it's a shame. But it's an interesting point of this keyboard is that you can do that, you can change those keys out. And maybe I'll change out a few, take some out of here just to show what puddings might look like. So I could probably get away with showing off some of that. Actually one of the Corsair keys is snuck in here. I didn't, I planned on doing it originally. Yeah, so I've got some directional arrows. They're still sealed up. I actually bought this pack ages ago with the intention of changing out a keyboard and never got around to it fully. And 
there's some arrows, so maybe I'll just brace the arrows and then give a close-up shot of what that looks like. I might do that in a minute or in an hour. This is the main camera that I use for capturing most of the footage. The reasons I use this one is because it has very smooth panning motion on a Manfrotto tripod, so it allows me to get some shots that I'm going to in a minute, which will basically involve propping this up at an angle and getting a nice shot of it like this. Right, it's down at this sort of height and then just side to side panning which gives that smooth view of the entire thing it also means you can go up and down get in close and go up and down another thing that I like to do which you might see occasionally which is very difficult to pull off is to have it straight up and then just lower it down like that and it's very difficult to get smooth because there's a lot of wobble in it it's not really designed for doing this but if you put your hand in the right place you can see you can get the camera to just sort of come down slowly and that can give some really nice shots. Generally I try and keep those sorts of really fancy things to the slider, the Edel Crone slider which I'll be using at the end, I usually save that for the end and then I put some clips of it at the beginning of my intro to the video so you probably noticed and then at the end of them as well so you can get sort of the finished product and a tease of what that's like but Right now I'm sort of in the middle of the capture of the footage and I've still got a lot more to do yet and I think it's been about 20 minutes, yep, about 20 minutes since I started and all I've done is take it out of the box, do some key sounds and get footage from multiple angles. Yeah, what I'm going to show is the size difference between this and the K65 RGB Mini and the frame on that. Obviously this is the 60% keyboard and this is TKL so they're different but I want to show the difference. Also, these are Cherry IMX RGB reds, but what I noticed when I looked at the K65 is there was a real ping in the key cells that was really noticeable and quite loud. The K70 doesn't seem to have that, so I'm going to try and include a bit of that in the video. So I'm going to use capture footage of key sounds again of these two keyboards side by side, which might be an interesting comparison, but also to show the size variance. So I'm glad I held onto this so I can actually show what the difference is between those two. And now I'm going through the process of installing them um, uh, textured WASD keys on the keyboard. And again, I'm on the floor as always, which is starting to get uncomfortable. And we're pushing, it's nearly been an hour now, and I've barely done anything. And I've got my Manfrotto tripod, as you can see, fully extended and then across and down, which is how I get some of these top-down shots when this other tripod won't really do the job, or boom arm. And now I've got to somehow get underneath this to be able to access the keyboard to pull the keycaps off, which is not going to be an easy process, um, but should result in some good video as long as I don't bash this, which is some of the main problems, is end up either having to reach around it or get underneath it, like this, and that's why it ends up with my hands looking like they're shaking because I'm in an awkward position trying to pull off some manoeuvres in order to get some good quality shots. So that gives you an example of how that happens and why. The other thing I'm thinking about is what I need to do in order to get the RGB lighting and whether I should use the slider on this side of the room, which I might actually do, capture it because my PC's here, my monitor's there, so I'll put it on my desk maybe and slide across in front of it and get the RGB that way. I think I did the same with the K55 or I do it on that desk but then I've got to get the USB cable across the room to plug into the PC which can be a bit of a pain. We'll see how we go with that. One thing you probably don't realise about those videos with the typing on is that I'm actually trying to type something. So I actually wrote, this is the Provoke form, this is the K70 RGB Pro TK which has some very nice features including an aluminium backplate which you can see here and a very nice little wheel which I was actually thinking about while I was writing it and now I'm going to need to get some footage of that as well because it's interesting. It's also quite sticky, 
I've just noticed by rolling it. It feels quite tactile and like a scratchy sort of way, but it also isn't as smooth as the K100. It's hard to put into words, it feels like it, I don't know, just a little bit of stick to it. It's interesting, it feels nice on the thumb, but it's weird. But these sorts of things that crop up, and also notice other things like PBT double shot keycaps, which is pretty standard on the fan fancier keyboards, and obviously these probably aren't PBTs, and I had to get shots of both of those as well. And I've done shots showing me just typing a proper sentence. Now I'm going to try and do some with just this sort of thing. So one of the highlights of these behind the scenes videos is uh, you get to see some of the thoughts and logic of stuff that I'll probably forget to talk about in the review, but one of the things I've just noticed with this keyboard is that uh, it has dedicated media keys, which I really like, but for some reason they're on the left, which is really unusual, of course I usually put some on the right hand side, and they're easy access in my mind for that, and I'm used to, I think most people actually, most other keyboards that I've seen have got the media keys on this side. So you've got volume wheel here, but your pause, play and stop buttons are on this side, which is very odd. So it's something I have to make a note of both in using, because I regularly use media keys for playing Spotify and stuff when I'm working, and just to mention they're on this side. I mean, it's not really a problem. You're using your hands over this side, but I'm so used to using them when they're over here. I think that's obviously. So it's little things like that that make a difference. Another thing that I've noticed while doing this, you see that shine there, this little screen that I did the peel on. <laughs> I actually messed up the peel because I actually tilted the keyboard forward a little bit, first of all, when it fell back into the skull that I was using to balance it on, so the peel actually didn't make a very good noise and then walloped on the back of this, so that was terrible. And another example of why my unboxing videos don't go perfectly, and it's not something that you can fix because I can't put that sticker back on really and then pull it back off again, so... That's a minor frustration, but... Uh, this thing is already starting to pick up dust, and I've only literally just got this out of the box, and there's already little specks of dust on it that you probably can't see, I can't pick up on that, but they probably will come up in the main video itself as I start to capture other footage of it, so those are little highlights, and if you're wondering why my face is so big, it's because this is currently on the macro lens, because that's just what I've been using on there, so expect these behind the scenes videos to be a bit rough and maybe a bit crazy sometimes with different levels of audio and weird macro lens shots, but hopefully still a fun look at how I make my videos. mentioned earlier in this video that I'm trying to make these, uh, my usual unboxing videos to be like tech porn to show close-up things and highlights of the devices, but one of the things I also do when I'm going through is try and focus on or find things of interest. So for example, this K70 has these textured keys on them. Which I'll show off in the video proper, but they're little tiny textured keys. I'll just try and put some B-roll in to show you what that looks like. But basically these are very nice textured keys that are shaped at a certain angle uh, off to the side. So for example the W key has a little bit of shape concave in a certain direction so you don't accidentally, your finger doesn't slip off when you're pushing upwards and also so you can tell where your fingers are and D shapes in that direction and S shapes in that way so it kind of has like a curve to it so you know where your fingers are sitting on a keyboard and it's one of the selling points of this design and it's something that they did with the K95 and um, they're not PBT double shot like the rest of the keyboard and so there's going to be some wear and tear, and I thought, well, how can I demonstrate that? Well, I've got a K95 XT, which is in a bit of a state because it's missing some keys for reasons they were used elsewhere. But they had the textured keys on them as well, and you can see them here. And I remember that this was in a drawer, and it was one of my faves, the K95 and then the XT 
great keyboards, really nice. And I had these WASD keys on here a lot, and this was my daily driver when I wasn't using other keyboards. And so you can see the wear on these keys versus the rest of the keys. And so I'm able to take this footage and put it into the unboxing, you know, side by side these keys with the other ones to be able to demonstrate what happens to this style of key over time. Now these are slightly different, these ones are um, more gun metal than this grey that there was in the old, and old style ones, but again they're the same sort of ABS plastic, so over time they'll probably wear out, the lettering wears off, but it doesn't on the rest of the keyboard, but it does on this area. Obviously this is a high traffic area anyway, so it's going to be used a lot more if you're a gamer. But it goes to show that it's worth thinking about. However, you do obviously get the standard WASD keys included in the box, so if they do start to wear out, you can always replace them. And it's certainly not a low point for me because I love these textured keys. I love the design of them, but it's worth bearing in mind that in time they will wear out. So I've been able to include that footage in there as part of the unboxing. Hopefully I'll be able to talk about it in the review and it will be interesting. And I've just got angles from several angles of installing these and showing off what they're like. And I've just realized while talking to you that I haven't actually got any loads of close-ups of these, so I might do that because I really like to focus on that. I've got a couple showing them side by side with the other one, but I think some more footage close-up will really show how those look awesome. And then plugging it in and showing off the RGB lighting is the next step as well. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my cutting board just for a bit of variety in the background, so it's not constantly wood, although I really like this. And it's a very expensive American walnut that I purchased. And it's got some really nice sort of grain on it, but I think it's important to have some variety in the shop so people don't see the same old thing all the time. So I like to try and keep these a bit varied. So I've got this enormous cutting mat that I've never actually cut anything on, <laughs> apart from maybe some boxes. I've built on this, on the PCs I've built on it because it's resilient and it stands up well, and obviously it's not going to generate static. And it looks pretty nifty like this as well. So you'll see I ended up capturing the RGB lighting on this one by plugging it into a laptop that I'm also to be testing rather than putting it on my desk. This meant that I could still use my clean desk without having to worry about tidying up the other side of the room which isn't as tidy at the moment and needs doing. But it still looks pretty good, I think. I've just captured what I feel like is a really fantastic shot. And I've also just seen that you can see my mannequin in the background. <laughs> if you see a lady staring at the back of my head, it's a mannequin that I bought ages ago to use for headset um, placement on, in unboxing review videos. And I haven't really used it recently, so <laughs> that explains that. But um, one of the things I've been trying to do here is capture those WASD keys on this keyboard with a panning shot and uh, on the well actually on the slider just moving the slider really super slowly to the left and right and the result of it is a really clean looking shot which I hope will look fantastic in the unboxing review video I might include a little snippet of it here just to give you a taste because it's really good I was really pleased with it and that is sort of the things that come out of this and being this low down on the floor as well which might seem weird and it is very uncomfortable and <laughs> one thing that um, I notice sometimes is uh, my knees creak <laughs> on the floor and I'm worried the mic's going to pick that up and also some people have noticed the noises what they felt were farts but it's actually my stomach just making roars but because the room's so quiet when I'm doing the things, because I'm trying to keep things really quiet while I'm capturing the video so you can make the most of that microphone, it just picks up my stomach noises and things like that, so I'm not really conscious of there being random noises in the videos, <laughs> so uh, it's, yeah, that's quite a frustration actually. And um, other things like car noises from outside are unavoidable as well, unfortunately, because there's a main road nearby, but otherwise it all goes pretty well I think and uh, now I'm at the end of capturing the footage and it is half eleven so it's taken me an hour and a half to get some footage of a keyboard and I'm not finished yet because obviously I need to actually use the keyboard and plug it in and capture the software and edit all the footage down 
and so the creation of a video like the unboxing of the K70 will probably take somewhere in the region of five to six hours once I've finished the capturing of more footage and uh, editing that footage down and whittling over a voiceover and everything else and then it'll probably get a few hundred views so not a great return on the investment but I enjoy doing it and hopefully some of you enjoy watching it. It's now the next day and I have had an idea this morning, it's lunchtime now, I've had an idea so I'm on a break from work and I'm going to try and implement this idea which is basically to take the keyboard and remove these keys and then reinstall them with just the WASD and then I put them back with with those other keys on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine that with the slider. So I'm going to slide, set this keyboard up in a position where it's interesting, and then I'm going to put the slider around three times in the same direction with exactly the same slide, but each shot I'm going to remove some of the keys and change them. So I'm going to start off with it like this, then I'm going to have it with just WASD, then I'm going to have it with the standard PBT double shot keycaps on there, and then I'm going to combine those clips and hopefully cut them in the right place where it looks like they're just suddenly appearing on the keyboard. I don't know how it's going to turn out, it's probably going to be quite tricky in Vegas Pro, which is what I'll edit it in. Um, it should in theory be okay, the only thing is I'm going to need to keep the keyboard and the slider in exactly the same place, which is going to be difficult because I'm going to have to mark out on the desk where that's going to sit and how it's going to work and so I need to position it in a place where it's not going to move around too much and also not knock the slider while then taking the keyboard off and taking these keys off so it's going to be not easy but the end result could be really good so let's see how that goes. So I think the first stage of this is going to be working out a position for it to be in probably here um, and then I need to establish something for it to lean against so I'm going to take this skull what I usually use to balance it on because it's quite heavy but it's also got a soft bottom so there's danger it might just slide around on the desk which obviously won't be ideal because what will happen is if I pick this up, do the keys and that's moved back a little bit when I go to put it back in that position again it then isn't in the same position and that will completely ruin the shot so I need to work out a way to stick this down I'm probably going to use some blue tack so I'm going to try and find some blue tack and then try that out so I managed to acquire some blue tack and I've got quite a bit of it. I actually bought specifically for this purpose to basically sticking things to the desk although not specifically for sticking this keyboard in the right place but generally for a mouse so I'm just going to try this and hope that it doesn't move around too much. Yeah I don't think that'll move so that should be good enough. The other drama I'm going to have is um, what you probably just saw there, what you can see there is this keyboard has a sort of sharp pointy bottom, so I've got to try and put it back in the same place each time, because it could end up sliding, and I also don't want to scratch the desk, so that's a pain. So I've realised that it might be a good idea to put like a cab over here so I can line up where the line's going to be, so maybe if I put her sort of in the middle so her feet are now where the back of the keyboard's going to be, and now I've got to establish a position for the slider. So I think maybe here's a good position and then I'm going to slide across. And what I want to do is try and keep the focus on the WASD key. So I'm going to try and just pan it in and keep panning as I move past. I'm going to slide past it but then pan back again so that they're in the shot for the longest possible amount of time and then you just see them disappear, at least that's the plan. So that's pose three and then slide over. And at this time I'm kind of at a distance, but I'm hoping it'll look good. Still, and there we go, pose four. So now I've got four different poses and you can see it sliding around and then I just need to test out and see whether it's going to be any good. And I'll put it in sequence mode again. So basically I'm doing the same as I was before. But I'm going to do this same shot three times, but with the keys taken off in different orders. So we just put it in the initial starting position. Make sure the focus is in the right place. Hit record.
And now that's complete, you can rewind to the beginning. And while it's doing that, I'm going to take off the keys. I'm going to leave WASD in place, but take off Q and R and E and F, wherever that is, F. Now I've got to get it back in the right position, which is going to be tricky, I think. I don't know if this will be perfect, it probably won't be. Now I've got all the keys back in the position they were when they first came out of the box, which means I'll have to use Eclipse in reverse order, but or make them come off. I don't really know which way around it will look like. I've also realised this probably isn't going to work perfectly, because if I haven't got the keyboard back at the right position, it's going to look a bit off. So maybe I need to work on improving it in future, but I like playing around with these sorts of things and testing to see whether they'll work or not. So it'll be interesting to see. And let's get into that. Another thing I've realised while doing it is that I thought initially it might be a good idea to have the RGB lighting on, but now I'm thinking if I try and cut three shots together and the RGB lighting's timing is ever so slightly off, it's going to be really jarring. So maybe I should have done it without, but this is just an experiment, so at this stage I'm not going to bother and we'll see because otherwise I've got to remove all the keys again and to be honest I've got loads of footage that I need to edit so I'm going to go into doing that now instead but hopefully that's still going to be interesting, we'll see how it goes if it ends up in the unboxing review then you know and I'll maybe put some of the b-roll in this behind the scenes as well so you can get a taste of it so now you can see the end clip and what the result of that's like and it starts off looking really good, I've taken two of the clips and I've tried to cut them in the right place and what you'll see is it fails, unfortunately, because the keyboard is ever so slightly in a different position. And so the result is unfortunately jarring. So yes, you see the keys change, but you also see the keyboard move. So it looks like a jump cut. It doesn't look great. So, you know, learning experience was just if I play again, you can see that problem. And this has been a behind the scenes look at how I do things, how I unbox various devices, the logic that I go through in capturing the footage and the devices that I use, along with a few bloopers that I should probably include in there. That includes things like I just tried to do this outro and I ended up capturing audio from both my microphone and the camera at the same time. So that was a disaster that I'm now going to start again, which is why I was laughing at the beginning of this cliff in case you're wondering. And this and has this been, been another behind the scenes, scenes look at how I unbox things. things. And so these behind the scenes clips are going to be a bit more rough and ready with bloopers and mistakes that I make. So if you find that thing sort of thing amusing, then I will be doing more of these in future that you can enjoy. And also I want to just demonstrate how I do these things the thought process that goes behind them and how I try to create sort of organic unboxing videos. So the thing that you see, usually I try and create this really polished, well-designed thing, but actually what goes in on the background is a lot more effort and involves a lot of thought into how I'm going to capture from different angles, how I'm going to highlight features of the product, like for example, the WASD keys on this TKL keyboard, how I'm going to deal with that, highlights and oddities of the keyboard itself like the media keys being on the left hand side so I'm going to capture footage from that and then try and include that in the unboxing review and also just experimenting and that's one of the reasons I bought the slider is to be able to experiment with different capture techniques and improve the quality of my videos and constantly be improving but this is something that I do in my spare time which I don't have a lot of so it's quite difficult to do but I do want to try and do more of it and I'd like to do more behind the scenes videos so if you're interested in this sort of thing and you'd like to know more more about how I do things, what I do, or why I do it, then please let me know in the description. I'm thinking about doing a behind the scenes look at how I edit videos in the near future, but also just little things. Uh, so for example, why I capture 10 seconds of footage for every different angle or the position that I've set things up in. Why have I decided that 10 seconds is a good amount of footage? Something like that, simple little things that I might cover in future videos. And I'd like to take a moment to thank my YouTube members, Meaty Keyboard, Raw, so spawns a lot, 
Jeffrey Johnson, Kraken Tortoise, Curtis Williams, and Gaming Rainbow, who have all clicked that join button to support the channel and are paying a small monthly fee to get special access or mentions in the description or in videos like this, as well as early access to content. And I'm going to also look at putting out members only content in the near future as well, which might include more of these behind the scenes videos, but I'm also going to do some public ones for everybody to enjoy. But if you'd like to see some extra special stuff, join my Discord, let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of or less of. And also I just appreciate some feedback on what you think of these videos and my normal videos as well. Do you enjoy them? Do you wonder why I always capture footage without me in the picture for the most part, apart from these behind the scenes videos now, obviously. And this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a great life.